Good evening, Francisco uh, and Luis is connecting. Thank you so much for being on time. I know that you report that with, you're going to be just listening, Francisco. And thank you for letting us know. And Javier, welcome to the class. I know at least six have reported that they are having issues due to the rain, the heavy rain we are experiencing in uh, different parts of the country. And yes, it's, it's going to be like quite difficult to have you participating today, but we will do our best. Um, so in the meantime, uh, if you're just listening because of the rain, if you're just listening because of the traffic or any internet issue, we're going to continue with yesterday's worksheet. We didn't finish yesterday because of the time. So we're going to continue with that today. And in the meantime, um, I see that probably most of you are going to be joining more people. So let me start sharing. Uh, this is the same worksheet that I sent yesterday and we were working with this one. Okay, so we were um, practicing the passive voice in the present perfect tense. We also discussed that, that this is used to focus in the action and the doer is not really important or in sometimes it's not mentioned. You know. And we practice the affirmative statements, negative statements, and just no questions using the, the passive voice in the present perfect. We are missing just two exercises in this worksheet. The first one is a WH question. Uh, it's the same structure as the yes, no questions that we have here. Um, the only difference is that before the auxiliary, before have or has, we are going to have a WH question word. That's the only difference, but the structure is the same. So you will have first the WH question word, then the auxiliary have or has, um, then the object, plus being, plus the verb in past participle, and subject in case, okay? The subject is not necessary to mention it, but if you want to mention it, that's okay. You add it by, and then the subject. Finally, the question mark. And we have one example already done here. Let me uh, make it bigger. I think I can make that bigger. Mm, oh, to be okay. There it is. All right, the WH question words. And we have one example already done for us. It's in the active voice. The question is, what have you done recently? If we translate that to passive voice, it's what has been done recently by you. It's optional. Remember that the subject is optional. There is not really important. So with this example, I think that we can complete the three remaining questions. I'll give you some time so you can, um, if you have the material printed, that's awesome. If not, you can do it in your notebook or you can modify the document in your computer. And give us some time for this. Let me know when you're ready.
Are you done with this exercise? Finished? Okay, seems like, um, well, at least it's six uh, of the participants told me that you're having different kinds of issues, uh, health problems, internet issues. Uh, some of you are still driving. So let me, um, if nobody has this, this one. Okay, following the oh. pattern. Mm -hmm. How? How has mm -hmm. it been? Or how has it been done? Uh huh. How has it been done? Excellent. Thank you so much, Maria. Um, do you happen to have the next one? Where have you done it? Where has it been done? Excellent, Maria. Where has it been done? And then the last one, why has he bought this car? Why has, why has this car been bought? Excellent, Maria. Why has this car been bought? Okay. <laughs> Some of a but... Okay, why has this card been bought? Excellent, Maria. Thank you so much for your participation. You did an excellent job. And then we have the last exercise for this worksheet. Um, so in this, we have to change the sentences in the active, uh, well, they are, in the active voice. So we have to transform them into passive. So let me see. Yeah, I can make it a little bigger. No, so so. Okay, this is the, the biggest I can make. Okay. So you have this, uh, these are affirmative, negative, and questions. They are, uh, this is a mix of all the things that we have studied in this worksheet. So you have to uh, transform them into the passive voice. I'll give you time and please let me know when you're done with this exercise.
Okay, um, any volunteer for number, well, for the first one, we have adopted the dog. Would somebody like to share a screen or just read them? Or haven't you finished yet? Do you need more time? I want to try the first. Okay, I have here in the chat, the dog have been adopted. Yeah, that's pretty good, pretty good, but something is uh, the dog. Okay, let's see dog. the dog. So have, been adopted. have or has? Has. Excellent. Has been adopted. Be us. By us. Okay. By us. Excellent, Aymar. Thank you so much. So, yes, the first one should be like this. The has been adopted by us. Thank you so much, Aymara and Luis. Uh, Second one, Sam has never liked me. I think I has been never liked Sam. Mm, no. Kind of, por ahí vamos. Sam has never liked me. I. I, I have never. I have. Uh-huh, I have never. I have never liked Sam. No. Been like. Been. <laughs> I have never been. Has. Been liked. My like. Sam. Okay. And we have the second one done. I have never been liked by Sam. Excellent, Mario también había compartido por el chat. Very good. Now, then, most people haven't tasted this. Most people haven't tasted this. It hasn't been tasted the most. This by, hasn't been tasted by most people. Great, awesome job, that's correct. This hasn't been tasted by most people. Thank you so much. Now let's move with the teacher has started the lecture. I think the lecture has been started by the teacher. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, it is, um, the, the order is correct, but it, it, there is one detail here. Has. Uh-huh, has. Has. Uh-huh. Porque aquí es esa, uh -huh. The lecture has been started by the teacher. 
but it was pretty good. Thank you so much, Aymara and Mario. Let's continue. Have you seen him on campus? That is a question. Have you seen him on campus? I I try. <laughs> Has campus been seen by you? Um, on campus es el lugar. Ah, no es el objetivo. Kim. Kim uh, es el objeto ahí. Ah, okay. Que ahí sería un pronombre reflexivo. Tenemos que cambiarlo a. A pronombre personal. Ajá. Ajá. Has he. Been seen on campus. Yes, he, yes. Has he been seen on campus? Ha sido el visto en el campus? Normalmente le dicen así a algún lugar como una universidad o algo así. Yeah. My parents have supported me in whatever I do. That's the next one.
Teacher, I have a problem by for finding the object. I don't uh, what uh, is the object. <laughs> okay, excellent question. The object is who or what receives the action. El objeto es quien recibe la acción o a quien va dirigida. Por ejemplo, aquí los padres son el sujeto. Eh, ah, sí, sería. ¿Han apoyado a quién? Al hijo, de son. A mí, ajá. Entonces ahí mí es el objeto. Entonces ah. ahí, ahí vamos a trasladar ese objeto al, al, al inicio de la oración. I has been. Ah, pero con I no usamos has. I have been. Uh -huh. I, I have. I have been supported by my parents in whatever I do. Excelente. I have been supported by my parents in whatever, what, <laughs> whatever I do. Okay, I have been supported by my parents in whatever I do. Vamos a cambiarle colorcito para no perdernos. Okay, I have been supported by my parents in whatever I do. Ahora, el objeto. ¿Cuál es el objeto en la que sigue? Has anyone kissed you yet? El objeto es quién o lo que recibe la acción. You. 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 Excelente, Luis. You. Ahí you es el objeto. Estamos hablando de que si alguien ha besado, ¿a quién? You. Uh -huh. Entonces, ahí vamos a cambiar. Es importante como el objeto eres tú. También vamos a cambiar el auxiliar, ¿verdad? Ya no va a ser has, sino que have, el objeto, have you. Uh -huh. Have you been uh, kissed by anyone? Yet. Have you been kissed by anyone yet? Yes, you know, Gary. Ahora veamos la siguiente. Have they prepared the food? ¿Cuál es el objeto? The food. The food. The food, la comida. La acción es hacia la comida al ser preparada, ¿verdad? Entonces, ya identificamos que el objeto es la comida, the food. Ahora, ¿qué auxiliar vamos a usar? Has. Has. Or has. 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 Porque has. nos vamos a referir a la comida. Has. The food. Uh -huh. Has the food been... Prepared. Lo podemos dejar ahí o ponerle el by them. Ahí by them. Ajá, uh -huh. podemos dejarle con by them. Por ellos. Has the food been prepared by them? O podemos dejarlo en prepare. Ok. A cambiarle color.
Everyone has forgotten you already. ¿Quién es el objeto? You. 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 A él es a quien han olvidado. Entonces, y al ser una oración, empezaríamos con, con eso. You. Luego el auxiliar sería have or has. Have. You has. Sí. Have, pero ahí sí me equivoco. <laughs> <laughs> You have been forgotten. Every everyone on this time. Everyone already. ¿Cuál es el objeto aquí? Your love has changed me completely. Me. 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 Ajá. Eh. Me es el reflexive. No puedo ponerlo como sujeto en reflexive pronoun. I. Entonces, ¿qué? And I. I. Ajá. I have. Excelente. I have. I have been changed. You love. I no. have been changed. Changed. You love me. Okay. I know. You love completely. Mm. No. I have been changed by your love. You completely. <laughs> by your love. Completely. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I have been changed completely by your love. By your love. Uh -huh. Y pues ahí nada más recordar. I, you, me para me voy a poner coma. I, you, we. And they, we use have, he, I, he, he, it, is, has. Mm -hmm. So remember for I, you, we, they, usamos have. Y para la tercera persona singular, has. He, she, it, has. And that's all for this. Uh, with this, we have finished the worksheet. <laughs> ya terminamos la hoja de trabajo que mandé. Y creo que les ha servido bastante. Lo han hecho un buen trabajo. Claro, a veces se nos olvidan algunas cositas y es importante que manifiesten cualquier duda, así como hicieron ahora, que tengo problema identificando al objeto, creo que ahora va a ser más fácil. Y si aún no lo es, no tengan pena en decir, todavía no lo comprendo, para que sigamos trabajando esas partes. Eh, esos temas son bastante eh, fuertecitos, no son temas fáciles, pero tampoco son imposibles, porque si recuerdan al principio de la semana pasada, quizás no le dieron ni patas ni cola a las indirect requests, al indirect speech, y al final lograron hacer bien los últimos ejercicios. Eh, así es que todo es cuestión de práctica, de no darse por vencidas y seguir perseverando. Ahora que terminamos la worksheet, vamos a seguir con el PowerPoint. 
Pero antes de eso, voy a chequear asistencia. Por ahí vi que a Mario se le cayó el internet, pero sí había estado conectado. Mm. Voy a revisar también el chat a ver qué pasó. Vamos a ver. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Mm -hmm. Oye. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Pareció que dijo que iba a estar como oyente en el chat, pero quizás no se conectó. Mm. Abigail Mejía Mendoza. Ok. Abigail Mejía Mendoza. Tampoco. Carlos Alberto Castro. Carlos Alberto Castro Santana. Carlos Emilio Costa. Thank you, Carlos Alberto. Carlos Emilio. Parece que ahí está Carlos Emilio y Carlos Humberto. También lo veo por ahí. Dijo que tenía problemas también. Cecia Noemí. Thank you, Cecia. I see that you wrote in the chat. Thank you so much. Francisco Ernesto. También sé que está por ahí nada más como oyente. Uh, Okay, Gerson Alexis. Gerson Alexis. Mm, no sé si va a Victor. Gertrude Saimara. Present teacher. Thank you. Hazel Vanessa. Yulisa Yamilet. Carla Ivania. Present teacher. Thank you. Luis Javier. Here, Miss. Thank you. Matiel. Matiel está U, por ahí lo veo. No sé si va manejando todavía. Eh, aquí lo puse ya como present. Sí, está conectado todavía. Eh, vamos a continuar entonces con uh, Marilyn Alejandra. Present. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Mario Ernesto, he was, uh, he was connected, but the internet kicked him off of the meeting. Melanie Alexandra. Present. Thank you so much, Melanie. Uh, Samuel Antonio. Santos Cristina. Present, teacher. Thank you. Um, Victor Noé. Present, teacher. Thank you so much, Victor. Teacher, yo aquí estaba, pero se me fue Se cayó el internet y me costó volver a entrar. Sí, así vi que estaba escribiendo en WhatsApp, así es que ahí lo chequeé como present porque sí había estado conectado. Y pues qué bueno que logró reincorporarse. Así que. Gracias. Uh, Let's see. All right, let me share my screen so that you can see my presentation. In this presentation, we have one exercise left from the book. So we discuss about what is the passive voice, how to form it. Ya estuvimos practicando qué es, cómo formarla. And then we have this exercise on your material. It's page 36. 
And we need to complete the following sentences and questions in the passive voice with the present perfect always. So um, then we have to choose the appropriate verb and then compare answer. The verbs that we need to use are easier, innovate, make, train, create, and give. Remember that those verbs must be in, um, let's say, in, in the perfect tense, right? So the first sentence is uh, three new safety measures. Hmm. Issue, innovate, make, train, create, or give. So remember to use uh, it as it is plural, está en plural, safety measures. Vamos a usar have or has. Have or has. Have teacher. Uh huh. Have. So three new safety measures have, and then been. Recuérdense que aunque sean, eh, dice, ah, pero so, está hablando de medidas de seguridad, son cosas, sí, pero está en plural. Entonces, para plural usamos have. Solo tercera persona singular usa has. Three new safety measures have been, y luego el verbo en pasado participio, y el complemento.
Have you finished? Let us check what you have for number one, three new safety measures. What do you think is the correct verb to use there? Can you have them all? You need more time? For number one, uh, the most appropriate verb is issue. Do you know the meaning of issue? Well, issue as verb, issue como verbos quiere eh, decir emitir, um, extender, expedir, facilitar o decretar. Entonces, eh, si estamos hablando de mm, medidas de seguridad, el verbo usar I, um, es mm, issue. Uh, the sentence is uh, the three new safety measures have been used by us. By us. Yeah, aha, uh -huh, issued. Aha, uh -huh, y solo tendrían que agregarle de al final al verbo. Three new safety measures have been issued. Puede ser by us, by them. Excellent, Aymara. Eh, bueno, el ejercicio dice complete, just the appropriate verbs. Eh, de hecho, los verbos están en, en orden. No hay que como complicarse buscando cuál es el apropiado porque están en orden. Solo para ayudarles un poco, el primero sería issue, que ya dijimos que el significado es emitir, um, expendir, um, facilitar, decretar, eh, Luego, para la número dos, el verbo sería innovate. Solo que tenemos que pasarlo a participio, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿cómo nos quedaría la dos? We. We have been ah, innovate. Pero espérenme que tenemos que dice complete the following sentence and questions in the passive voice. Uh -huh. Pero si es pasiva, bueno, entonces, ya, yeah, la primera está bien. Three new safety measures have been issued. And then we, por ahí había alguien, no, 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 perdón que interrumpí. Ajá. We. Mm. Ahí sí tendríamos que darle eh, new earplugs. New earplugs. Ahí tendría que ser use. Mm. I think eh, it's only we, we have innovated. Or not. Mm, we have innovated. New earplugs. Mm. Oh. Mm. O podríamos cambiarla a new earplugs have been innovated by us. Eso sí que tendríamos que, que cambiarla. New earplugs have been innovated by us. In number three, the new safety googles are nice. Mm. 
Oh, let me see, I got confused. Ya me confundí, creo que no, no están en orden, perdón. Sí, the new, la primera C es issue. So what do you have in number two? Mm, really? Give, yes. Ajá. Uh -huh. ¿Cómo quedaría entonces? Con give. Pero igual habría que darle vuelta. O sea, que no... Mm, no. Solo habría que agregar luego el auxiliar. Que sería have or has. Para we. Have. We have. Luego. Been. Been. Pasada participio de give. We have been given, given, uh -huh, given new earplugs. Uh -huh. And the new safety googles are nice. They, aquí había notado que iba innovate, but what do you have? Seleccionaron innovate para number three? Or do you think the other one is going to be better? What do you have for number three? What is the verb? The new safety googles are nice. The, the first, yes, uh, they have been innovators. Excellent. Okay, yeah, we have the same. Then we have been, they have been innovated. Thank you so much, Aymara. Excellent job. Now for number four, I have make. What do you think? Uh-huh, because this says of genuine leather. De cuero genuino. So I guess it's make. What do you think? What do you have? Uh-huh. So the sentence will be the new steel toe boots. Make has been made. Have, uh -huh. have. como son las botas, es plural. Have, have, have. been, have been. Y el verbo, ¿cuál es el participio de make? Made. Made. Uh -huh. Make, made. Made, ese, ajá, los últimos son made. Aquí se lo puede escribir en el chat. Made, hoy. Es es for in the meeting. Yes, made. Made. Ese es pasado y también participio, es así. Entonces son las uh, new steel toe boots, son las botas que tienen un cubo de, un cubo de acero. En, el, en los dedos del pie. Uh, so the new steel tool boots have been made of genuine leather. Now in number five, what do you have? I have train. I think it's train. And you? Yo tengo train que es entrenado, entrenar. Pasado participio, ese es regular, sería 
con ed el participio. Es pregunta. Tenemos que empezar con el auxiliar, porque esto es el que es no cuestión. Ajá, has. 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 Ajá, has, porque es el safety officer. Has the new safety officer. Has the new safety officer been 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 the verb? <laughs> ah, este que de cuál era? Trained. Ahí se los dejé en el chat. Has the new safety officer been trained? ¿Ha sido entrenado el nuevo oficial de seguridad? ¿Has the new safety officer been trained? Trained. And the last one, or for the last one. What do you have? What verb do you have? For number six. For me, I think that, for me, I think that we have to repeat the verb give. And you, what do you think? The new helmets, los nuevos cascos. What do you think? Uh -huh. It's a question, es una pregunta y pienso que ya que habla de los nuevos helmets, uh, no, bueno, será que crear? Pero, I think it's uh, created. Create. Entonces, ¿cómo quedaría la pregunta? Ajá, por eso yo pensaba que create, ¿no? Porque entonces quedaría como have we been creating the new helmets. Era como nosotros hemos sido creados los nuevos helmets. Uh, so, mm, mm, por eso pienso que ahí te, se tiene que repetir give. Uh -huh. A veces hay cosas así con, es, con el material, entonces, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's give. Si usamos give, ¿cómo nos quedaría esa pregunta? Mm -hmm. Have we 
how mm -hmm. we have been given we have how we, we been have. given aha uh -huh. excellent have we been given the new helmets aha uh -huh. se nos han dado los nuevos cascos aha uh -huh. okay so Let's uh, get out of this topic. Yeah, <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> We're going to continue with this one, the world we live in. Uh, it's basically the same topic, pero le vamos a agregar material con audio, con listening, para salir un poco de, 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 del material. Eh, siempre siguiendo el, el tema, pero... Eh, con diferente topic. Uh, the world we live in, waste, not, want, not. Some alarming facts. Um, is there any volunteer to read the alarming facts? Americans make 750,000 photocopies every minute. Can you believe that? Only Americans. They throw away two and a half million plastic bottles every hour. They get rid of 30,000 cars every day they dispose of 49 million baby diapers every day receive 4 million tons of junk mail every year use 65 billion aluminum cans every year throughout 270 million tires every year. This is only Americans. Can you believe that? <laughs> wow. Is there any new vocabulary here? Tenemos vocabulario nuevo. Do we have new vocabulary? We're going to be using it. Lo vamos a estar usando. Okay, Cristina dice numbers, los números. Okay, los números, el 750 mil sería 750,000. 750,000. Luego el 2 millones y medio, 2.5 million. Eh, luego el 30 mil, 30,000, luego 49 million, que serían los 49 millones, 4 million, 65 billion, 65 billones, and 
eh, 270 millones igual sería como eh, 270 million. Escribirlos, dice. Ok, solo eh, los cientos es agregar la palabra hundred. Ahí se lo escribo. Traductor. Mm. Ok, hundred. Ese es el cientos. Y los miles. Thousand. Ahí se los pongo. Si es mil, es one thousand. Si son dos mil, two thousand. Y así vamos. Si son treinta mil, como en este caso, sería uh, la palabra thirty. Así, 30, y luego agregar la palabra thousand. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Ya resolvimos lo de los números. Eh, get rid of. ¿Qué significa ese verbo? Get rid of. Get rid of. Se deshacen, deshacerse de algo. Se deshacen de 30 mil carros cada día. Muchos de ellos vienen a parar por estos rumbos. <ríe> ok, dispose, is, I think it's easy. Receive four tons of junk mail. Junk mail en, el, en este. Eh, ahí ven que hay un tractorcito con lo de los desechos, el junk mail. Eh, si lo vemos en cuanto a electrónico, es el, el, el correo como spam, ¿verdad? Eh, pero no, no se refiere a eso porque ese no contamina. El que sí contamina como junk mail son todos esos volantes y cuestiones de propaganda folletos, volantes, eso es junk mail. Y reciben en el botadero 4 millones de toneladas. Junk mail. Mm. Uh, the tires every year. Okay, I think that was it in regards of vocabulary. And then, it says, this is an announcement for an election campaign. It says, Vote for Roberta Chang, City Council. Roberta Chang will clean up Crowdfield. Crowdfield is, is the nombre de la ciudad or del place. Have you noticed these problems in our city? Problemas, veamos. The air is being polluted by fumes uh, from cars and trucks. Hay algo nuevo ahí. The air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks. Ese es voz pasiva siempre, pero esa es en qué tiempo. Veamos. The air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks. Es el pasiva presente continuo. Nos dice que el aire está siendo contaminado por gases de carros y camiones. Let's see the next one. Potholes aren't being repaired due to lack of funding. Do you know what's a pothole? What is a pothole? Uh, pothole son los baches, los baches, los hoyos en la carretera, en el camino. Those are pothole. Aren't being repaired due to lack of funding. Lack of, la palabra lack of es cuando hay ausencia de algo, falta de algo, falta de fondos en este eh, caso. Eh, third one. The homeless have been displaced from city shelters because of overcrowding. 
Déjenme saber si hay vocabulario nuevo en esta tercera. The homeless have been displaced from city shelters because of overcrowding. No new vocabulary. Okay, if there's no vocabulary, we continue next. Many parts have been lost through overbuilding. Many parks have been lost through overbuilding. Our city streets are being damaged as a result of heavy traffic. Same thing here in El Salvador. Our fresh water supply is being depleted through overuse by people who don't conserve. Questions in regards of vocabulary? The play teacher, the play. Depleted es. Depleted. Okay. Ajá, reducido. Overuse, overuse. Uh -huh. Overuse, así como se. Overuse. 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 Ajá. Overuse, como use. Ajá, okay. uh -huh. entonces nos dice que nuestros. Um, su, el supply es el, los que suplen, ¿verdad? Okay. De agua fresca están siendo reducidos debido al sobreuso de las personas que no conservan, los que no cuidan, desperdician el agua, la sobreusan. Entonces, está siendo reducido el, 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 el supply. El damage, damage, así, damage. Damaged. Damage. Con Excelente. Da, damage. Damaged. Damage. Ok. And having, overbuilding, overbuilding. 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 Ajá, overbuilding. Que han okay. sobreconstruido. Se ha construido demasiado. Overcrowding. Overcrowding. Overcrowding es eh, sobrepoblado. Okay. Sobrepoblación en este caso. Dice que los homeless son las personas sin hogar. Have been displaced. Han sido desplazadas de los refugios de la ciudad. Eso es city shelter. Un shelter es un refugio. Han okay. sido desplazadas de los refugios de la ciudad debido a la sobrepoblación because of overcrowding. Pataless, la palabra pataless. Pothole. Box holes. Box holes are in. Okay. Box holes. Box holes son los baches, los hoyos en la calle. Box holes. Okay, thank you. Okay, now um. Listen to an announcement from an electronic campaign. What kind of problems that Roberta Chang wants to fix? And then in part B, which of these problems affect your city? Can you give specific samples? I'm going to stop sharing. Eso, es el, eso ya lo tienen en el PowerPoint que, que les envié. Oh, vamos a ir a escuchar para practicar listening. And let me share audio with you. Make this bigger for you to be able and see. Okay, here it is. Okay, let's listen. Unit seven, the world we live in. Page 44, exercise two. Can you listen? Yes, teacher. Okay, okay, thank you so much for confirming. Perspectives. Clean up our city. Part A. Listen to an announcement from an election campaign. 
What kinds of problems does Roberta Chang want to fix? Vote for Roberta Chang, City Council. Roberta Chang will clean up Cradville. Have you noticed these problems in our city? The air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks. Potholes aren't being repaired due to a lack of funding. The homeless have been displaced from city shelters because of overcrowding. Many parks have been lost through overbuilding. Our city streets are being damaged as a result of heavy traffic. Our fresh water supply is being depleted through overuse by people who don't conserve. A vote for Roberta Chang is a vote for solutions. Okay, now, which of these problems affect our cities? Can you give specific samples? I think that here, one of the biggest problems that we have is the pothole, especially during the rainy season. I, I don't know, but they get bigger during the rain. And uh, yeah, they, they hardly ever fixed the potholes in the street. Any ideas from you? No ideas? Okay. So we continue then with uh, the next uh, thing that I included in the presentation is the passive voice, which is the, the topic that we have been studying uh, with, I think it's uh, easier vocabulary. So we have a present continuous passive and the present perfect passive. Um, it's basically the same thing. Es básicamente lo mismo y eh, la primera pues ya debió haber sido estudiada en módulos anteriores. El presente continuo en voz pasiva es pues nada más en vez de have agregamos el verbo be, ¿verdad? Uh, el verbo be siendo am, um, is, o are. Eh, luego being con ing. Y luego el verbo en pasado participio. Eh, es con, algo así como decir the air is being polluted. Es decir, el aire está siendo contaminado. And that's it. Y luego la present perfect passive, que es la que hemos estado practicando. Como por ejemplo, many parks have been lost. Uh, let me play the recording for you. And then we uh, check if there is some something to discuss. Page 45, questions. exercise 3, grammar focus. Passive with prepositions. Present continuous passive. The air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks. City streets are being damaged as a result of heavy traffic. Potholes aren't being repaired due to a lack of funding. Present perfect passive. Many parks have been lost through overbuilding. The homeless have been displaced because of overcrowding in city shelters. All right, that was the recording. Uh, any question here? No questions here? Okay, as you can see, um, we are using the passive with prepositions to put the ideas together. 
And these are the prepositions uh, that we are using here. You can see them in bold. It's by, as a result of, due to, through, because of. No questions here? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and show you that this is the material that we're going to be using on the, the rest days. Okay, so let me, okay, I think the, the screen is right low. So you have this in the PowerPoint presentation, and this is what we're going to be working in these days. Remember that we only have seven days left, so we can finish this module and uh, if you want any specific topic to be reviewed or to have more practice on, let me know uh, because we are almost finishing the section number four. Ya casi estamos terminando la sección cuatro. Eh, y es básicamente eso, la voz pasiva. Eh, vamos a hacer más ejercicios. Ya lo dominan bastante bien. Eh, pero pues eh, para terminar de pulirlo, Vamos a estar trabajando con este material del cual pues si tenemos audios, listening y les muestro aquí por si lo quieren, eh, por si quieren y lo pueden imprimir. Eso es lo que vamos a estar haciendo y cualquier modificación que haga se las mando de nuevo al grupo de WhatsApp. Para mañana esto sería lo que estaríamos trabajando y si hay algún tema que quieren que repasemos eh, me lo hacen saber pues de, tenemos todavía seis, eh, siete días de clase antes de terminar el módulo. Esto ya lo envié, lo envié antesito de la clase el día de ahora. Me confirman si, si lo tienen y si no, pues lo volvemos a reenviar. Ahorita pues nada más eh, chequear asistencia porque pues veo que ya algunos lograron eh, conectarse nuevamente y no sé si están o no eh, registrados como presentes. Déjenme ver. Ok. Uh, I don't have Abigail Mejía Mendoza. Present. Thank you so much. I'm all missing. Herzen Alexis Punes. Mm. Herzen Alexis Punes is not here. Julissa Yamile Pialta. Julissa Yamile Pialta. Ahí la veo conectada. Uh, Samuel Antonio. Okay. Okay, this uh this completes today's section. Thank you so much for joining um and see you tomorrow. I hope that you sleep well. Hi Thank teacher, you. sorry. Okay. I have many issues. Yes, I, I, I know everybody has, <laughs> most of you have issues today, but that's fine. Okay, right. thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow as well. See you, Everyone, teacher. See you, take care. See you, and teacher. See you, bye. Thank you, Francisco and Carlos. I've checked your attendance. So, see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Mm-hmm.